Here's another three inch over here. Can I get that down? Oh, what do you know? Do I need to baton it? Does it look like I need to baton it? Do I have superhuman strength? No, I don't. Am I into the inside of this thing where the dryer wood is? Yes, I am. Hey, it's Greg here with Outdoors on the Cheap. And today I'm gonna to do a video about taking down trees without using a saw or ax that are dead. Okay, so I recently did a video showing how to fell two, three, maybe even three and a half or four inch trees that are green by bending the tree over and using a knife. And without batoning, you can take that tree down. And once you get good at that technique, it works pretty good, but it works for green trees that you can bend over. Uh, so one of the viewers asked the question, what about dead trees? You can't bend them over. So that's what I'm gonna be talking. I wanna show you a couple of techniques for taking those trees down without using an ax, without using a saw, and without having to baton it baton your knife. And the whole argument, the reason I'm always arguing against batoning your knife is that to buy a knife, just to make the point really quickly, to buy a knife you can baton with reckless abandon, you got to spend serious money to get something that indestructible. Whereas if you use a $20, $30 knife like this cheap old Mora here, um, and I mean you can do light batoning with something like this, but this is not the sort of thing you come on to and hammer, right? Um, I mean, I've done that with this and it's made it through, but I, I would not trust my life to that. Uh, so you just avoid doing that and you, you, you adapt and, and use other ways. Yes, you can buy a $200 knife or a $100 knife or whatever, but what if you can't afford that? What if you're not in that situation? I've spent years of my life uh, just avoiding those sort of expenses. I still want to get out in the woods. I still want to be able to handle myself in whatever kind of situation I, I'm in. I use these relatively inexpensive knives, they get lost, right? And get by just fine. So these videos are about how to get by without that batoning situation where I'm always, I tend to argue that the reason they make that argument is to sell you knives. They want you to think your cheap knife is no good. And they want you, these YouTube guys that are always batoning knives, they want you to want the knife their sponsor is trying to sell you. Okay, I could be wrong in that, but that's what it looks like is going on to me. <laughs> right? Once you take away the necessity to baton a knife, you don't need nearly as a spectacular a knife and you can save a lot of money. Anyway, this video is about felling dead trees. So I'm in an area here in the woods where there's dead trees all over the place. And where I live, Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, anywhere you are in the woods, there's dead trees uh, all over the place. And this is another point about when you're in a survival situation. Um, it's one thing, if, if, if your only experience of being in the woods is being at a campground, at being at someone's camp, a camping place where people are all the time, then the resources are limited. And so you need to cut wood and make kindling and stuff like that because there's only so much resources around. If in a wild forest like the one I'm in here, where I never run into people, I never run into anybody, right? Um, no one's using the resources, right? Every tree is where it is. No one's using anything up. So just, just looking about 180 degrees, I see dead trees I can push down, dead trees maybe I can't push down. Uh, I see dead trees that are so rotten they wouldn't be good firewood. I see dead trees that look pretty dry that they'd be half decent dry, uh, firewood. I see birch trees with bark hanging off of them. I mean, this is all within a, a top, you know, uh, <laughs> pretty close, right? It's a stone's toss, basically. All That's all within like 30 feet of where I'm standing right here. I didn't even look behind me, right? Um, and there's dead trees I can push over, and there's dead trees maybe I can get them over with a little bit of effort. Um, so the answer to how do you bring down dead trees, uh, for the most part, is you push them down. And I'm going to show you another trick. What if you try to push the dead tree down and it won't come? There's a really easy trick to just amplify your, your, your power, right? Using a little bit of physics, right? Um, as long as you've got, and you should never be in the woods without this, a little roll of paracord or something like that, some relatively strong rope that you can pull on. It doesn't take up any room. I just have it in the little side pocket here. I've always got that with me. You never know when you're going to need it. it. Weighs nothing. Always got it. It's a fantastic problem-solving tool, just having that, that paracord around, right? So, anyway, let's go push down some trees. <laughs> Come on. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I, I'm working a radius, roughly first base to home base. Sorry for the baseball reference. I don't know exactly the exact distance of that, but that's the basic distance I'm working from where the camera is, okay? And I'm just finding dead trees and seeing if I can push them over. And what I'm trying to find is a dead tree I can't push over, so I can show you how to get that down using rope. <laughs> okay, so this one here, the thing about a lot of dead trees, this is uh, dead spruce, is that they tend to rot out at the base because it's moist down there, it's always wet. All right, it's dry up here, this tends to be the dry wood, they tend to be rotted, rotten at the bottom. So this one here looks like it's got <laughs> no problem coming down, okay? Uh, another question Buddy asked me is, what about, uh, the other point he made in the video was, what about getting into the center of the tree to get the dry stuff? Well, most of the time, uh, you can just, you can just break it, right? You can hit it against something, right? You can, right? You've got, you've got options. You've got options for that, right? For getting into a tree. You don't need to baton your way into it. You can just bash your way into it. Okay, you can even use one piece of wood against another one. If you don't want things flying all over the place, right? You just hold the one piece of wood on something and you, you hit it like that, right? You don't need a knife for that stuff. Anyway, that tree came down pretty easily. Let's find another one. I guess there's this one here. No problem getting that one down. Let's find one that doesn't want to come down. Here, I'm just going to turn the camera over here. Here's a tree. No problem with this one. This one's coming right out at the roots. All right. That's perfectly good firewood. That's, I can feel it. It's, it's damp. This last two feet, I can feel the weight here. But up here, it feels really hollow. I'm sure if I, let me just change my camera angle here. I'm sure if I just put some weight on that, okay, we're in, right? So here we got something. This isn't the driest in the world, world but this might be secondary or tertiary kindling. It's semi-dry. Right? Uh, but we can take this. This is really dry here. I can just feel feel how dry it is. Right? Now I can take this piece and hit it. Right? And I can get inside and get to the dry stuff. Right? That's pretty dry in there. Right? So the idea that you need to baton your knife to get to the inside of the dead wood. Dead wood's dead. <laughs> There's different grades of dead wood, but you know, you don't have to go into lumber mill quality wood to get decent firewood, right? And if you're in a survival situation, you don't want to be screwing around with that anyway, right? You want the driest tree you can bash open easily. You don't want to be tinkering around, right? With your, your baton and all that sort of stuff. You just want to bash it and break it and use it. Let's find it. Let's con let's continue to look for a tree I can't tip over. All right, here's one looks pretty solid. No problem. <laughs> I don't know if I can find a tree I can't tip over. So this one, maybe five six inches diameter at the base. And uh, of course, it's, it's wet near the bottom. But the top broke off right when it landed. And you can see the top here, I can get into that no problem. I don't need to baton it and I can bash this into finer stuff. But this is pretty dry. It's not matchstick dry, but it's pretty close, right? As dry as you can expect something to be today, right? And if I get into the inside, let's see if I'm gonna get it against you, maybe. Oh, 
just knocked down another tree right there. Here, I'll just stomp it maybe. Here we go. Yeah, see, it's no problem getting into this. Okay. Very light, very dry. Don't need a baton. It. I'll still see if I can find a tree I can't knock down. A dead tree. Here's a three incher like the ones I was uh, getting down without batoning. Not a problem. Can I break it in half? Not a problem. Oh, here's another three incher over here. Can I get that down? Oh, what do you know? Do I need to baton it? Doesn't look like I need to baton it. Do I have superhuman strength? No, I don't. Am I into the inside of this thing where the dryer wood is? Yes, I am. Let's see if we can find another tree I can't take down. Here's a nice old dead spruce, maybe five inches in diameter at the base. Can I take that down? You gotta look up when you're doing this because you don't know if the top's gonna break off. I'm having a hard time finding a tree I can't take down by just pushing over. Uh, with my 49 year old man, you know, not the strongest guy in the world strength, but there's gonna be some, I'm sounding sarcastic here, but I kind of thought I'd find one by now. It's gotta be a tree, so there's gonna be a dead tree here I can't push over somewhere. I mean, I've already gotten, I don't know, at least two, three hours worth of firewood uh, just with what I've done so far, pretty close to it. But let's keep going. Let's keep finding that tree I can't push over. So I've worked really hard to find this tree. You know, I can't speak to every stretch of the woods, okay? I mean, wood lore, woodcraft, bushcraft, it is always context specific. I'm speaking to the kind of woods that exist here in Nova Scotia, Canada, where I live in this particular part of the province. And Nova Scotia is a kind of unique province. It has sort of different ecologies, depending on where you are. This is like a coastal forest, I guess. It's a term for it. Coastal boreal or something like that is a term. Um, anyway, here is... I probably had to search 20 dead trees, dead standing spruce trees to find this one here that I couldn't push over. And I think even if I, I totally maxed out, I might be able to get it down. But when you're in a, in a situation, like a survival situation, something like that, you don't want to be totally maxing out because you could hurt yourself, right? Dangerous, right? It, things can go wrong. So, got my uh, rope here. And you think about... A tree when you're trying to push a tree down you're turning that tree into a lever and you're pushing that lever against some weak point in the tree below where you're pushing that's what you're going for you're trying to break the tree using a lever the tree is the lever the higher up you can actually apply force against the body of the tree the bigger the lever is the more of a force multiplier you get Okay, just some basic grade 10 physics, right? Um, so, I can reach up as high as I can here. I don't know how strong this rope is, so I'm actually going to double it like this. Now, I can get this higher using a stick. I just open this up and using a stick try to push it up higher. Right. Anyway, so I've got this now doubled up. Okay, I can adjust a little bit. Right, and it'll, it'll stay put on the tree. Now I'm able to apply all the strength I have in my body to that height in the tree. I couldn't do that if I was reaching up. It's, it's about as high as I can reach. Right. I can only. I'm six foot four. And really, the most strength I have is pulling this way. So I can only reach about five, six feet high, give or take, right? So now I've got this thing eight feet high, and I could go higher. Just using a stick, I could push that loop up higher. Now I can pull. I mean, this is a bit dangerous because you're pulling it right towards yourself. So you have to be careful. And I don't want to pull it onto my GoPro either. <laughs> but anyway, start pulling. Down she goes. Okay, so it's a bit dodgy because you're pulling it right towards yourself. 
the longer the rope is, the safer it is, I suppose. And there's little tricks you can use um, to make it a little bit safer, but they take more time. But with very little work, very little energy on my part, I was able to take down this tree, which wouldn't come down. That being said, there's so many trees that were easy to knock down that were dead. I wouldn't waste my time on this unless I was desperate, because it's just not worth the time. You know, if, if, if 19 out of 20 trees are pushed down, easily pushed down, why would you waste your time with a tree that won't come down? So I'm not saying there isn't forests full of dead trees that can't be pushed over, but I mean, they're dead. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> you know, some of them died last year. Some of them died five years ago. Some of them died 10 years ago. Some of them died 20 years ago. So they're all in varying states of decay. And at least with the ecosystem I'm working out of, they tend to rot near the base where everything's damp and wet and moist, right? That's where all the fungus, fungi, and the different things get into and work on it and break the wood down and make it brittle, make it break. You can have trees that are completely rotten at the bottom and almost mill quality up near the top, dead standing trees. That can happen too. Um, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that's the gist of it, right? You do not need to baton dead trees because you can push them down. I mean, huge dead trees. There's one over there that's almost 16 inches in diameter. I can't push that down, but you ain't batoning that down either, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's the answer. If the tree's dead, uh, knock it down, <laughs> push it down. If it's being a bit uh, difficult and you happen to have some rope on you, use that. But even if you don't have the rope, which you should always, you should always have, you know, at least four arm spans of rope. I think Morris Kahensi says seven. Uh, I like four because I just find it more, it, it, it's, it behaves better, let's put it that way. <laughs> it's less likely to get uh, tangled up in things, that sort of thing. Um, despite this evidence to the contrary. Um, yeah, I, like, I don't know what this length is here. One, two, probably four because I like four. Three, four, four and a half. Okay, I find that when you when you roll it up, it sort of I got a little side pocket here. It just fits in there. So some people say seven, some people say four, whatever, right? No, no, not a big deal. Uh, anyway, the point is, you do not need a knife to put on dead wood to get into it. I showed that. All you got to do is bash it open. You don't need to put on a knife to take down dead trees to use them because you can push them down because they're dead. <laughs> so. I hope you uh, find that uh, found this interesting. For the guy that made the comment, I'm, I'm coming off like a bit of a jerk here in the video, and it's not. Um, I don't mean it personally. Okay, um, it's it's a fair question. Um, I just, and perhaps there again, perhaps there are places in the world where all the dead trees are just impossible to push over. I suppose that could be the case, but I mean, if it's dead, it's. Once it's dead, it begins to rot, so I find that hard to believe. I think, and I'm not speaking about this person specifically, but, you know, there's a value when it comes to this sort of stuff, to being out in the woods and spending a lot of time out in the woods. Because there's the things that people tell you on YouTube. You look at the guys really, really pushing the necessity of batoning. And uh, chances are they make their living off of some sort of Outfitter, supplier, knife maker, and so on and so forth. Not all of them. I'm sure some of them are honest actors, that sort of thing, perhaps, I suppose. Um, but I just find it, having spent a lot of time in the woods myself, um, you know, it's it's rare. It's extremely rare. I, I, that batoning becomes a necessity, right? And I've shown you why. All the things they say you need it for, you don't, it's rare that you need to do it. You know, maybe it's there's some situation where it might come in handy. But I think part of the point is that when you're at a camp where all the easy to, all the materials that are readily usable are used up and what's left is really hard dead standing trees that you have to use an ax to take down, you have to baton, all that sort of stuff, I suppose. But when you're in a real wilderness situation and real sort of untouched, pristine wilderness, that sort of stuff, there is fire starting materials everywhere if you know what to look for. There's dead trees that are dry on the inside that you can bash open everywhere. 
there's where I'm standing right here, there was birch bark everywhere, right? I mean, there's just materials everywhere here because no one has spent days and days and days camping in this spot using up all the good stuff, right? There's good stuff everywhere, right? And that's a lot of survival situations are going to be like, not all of them, of course. I, I, you know, I'm only speaking to my ecosystem here. But anyway, I think I'm starting to ramble. So it's time to wrap up. Uh, just some thoughts about... Um, the necessity, the so-called necessity to, for batoning, for taking down uh, dead trees. You don't need to baton dead trees. Most of the time you can just push them over. Um, if you can't push them over, I just say find ones that you can push over. <laughs> you know, if there's dead trees around, again, the, the question was, what about dead trees? So there's dead trees around. Okay, you're in the woods, there's lots of dead trees. Um, you can push them over. <laughs> they're weak, they're dead. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> hope you found that interesting. If you did, please. Like, share, subscribe, and until next time, enjoy the outdoors on the cheap. Thanks for watching. <laughs>